Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. I know now why the Lord gave me this message. After I heard everything I heard this morning. You did not hear me well? Um, check and see if you've got your mute on. I shouldn't have my mute on unless you hand it to me with mute on.
So, if God is, is giving the same kind of grace to my brother and my sister, then how am I to act? How should my opinion be towards them? Even if they've done you wrong. Even if they've done you wrong. Like this El Capitan. I love that story, Pete. What a story. Oh. Okay, going into uh, verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. How does that look? How does that look to you to live denying ungodliness and worldly lusts and living soberly? And righteously. You know how that looks? How does that look to you? You know, we, we have a world that's just flipped upside down in turmoil. This this is just like a this is like a bad dream, this place. It's a nightmare. I don't even know why we still want to be here. But we must be comfortable. We must really be comfortable. Because that's the only reason I can see that we're still here. Because God does not have a people yet that are prepared and ready to receive Him. And when the world sees that people, they will not be able to stand. Every decision will be made. And Jesus Christ will not wait another moment when every decision has been made. Because He loves His people. And he will come at that moment. He stands up. The Bible says, it says what? Let him who is unjust be unjust still. And him who is righteous to be righteous forevermore. Right? Yeah. What do you want more than that? Than to see Jesus come. Everything in this world is painful. It rusts. It rots. I don't care how much you shine it up. It don't last. Nothing here. The only thing that we have is the relationships that we build together and the bond of peace. How do we come up with peace if we don't have war with sin? That's the only way we have peace is to have war with sin. And the Bible, my Bible tells me that my heart is desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. I need God's help every single day. Look at the church doesn't look any different than the world, brothers and sisters. We look nothing different. Nothing different. If we did look different, we would be being persecuted. Look, we, we argue and fight amongst each other and backbite and, and, and divorce and everything else is in the church. It's, it's as horrible. It looks like the world. And each one of us are guilty. Amen. All of us. Moving into verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Is he not the blessed hope? Is he your blessed hope? I sure hope so. I hope you're falling more in love with Jesus every day because if that's the case, then, then we can start to lose self. Self can begin to die and Christ can become alive. Verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Are we zealous of good works? Are we a peculiar people? I believe we used to be called a peculiar people. I don't know that we're so peculiar anymore. I wonder. These things speak and exhort and, re and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise. Moving in. You know, Jesus, Jesus was, um, he was dispassionate. We, we don't have that anymore. When it, when, it, when it comes to our worldly living, everything is opinionated. Everything, everywhere you look. I don't care if you get your news from the right, you get your news from the left, you get your news from the center. Everything comes from a bias. Everything does. 
Everything that people look at is skewed from their understanding. It's like, it's like when you get a revelation in the Word of God. You have an awe moment. You have an understanding that you didn't have before. When you have that understanding, now as you read the Bible, it changes everything that you see. Because you, you see from a different point of view. Everybody today is so opinionated that it's just pitiful. I remember when I was a little duffer, we had this guy, Walter Cronkite. He would give the news. And he would give the news dispassionately. And he'd say, that's the way it is. Right? With no skew, right, left, middle, whatever. Just the facts. Remember that? Just the facts, man. Just the facts. The Bible is full of the facts. The Bible is the truth. We have all these churches, but we have one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. That's what the Bible says, right? So why all these different churches? What happened? They all claim to have truth. They all claim to be preaching the truth. You don't hear any church say, come and we'll teach you deception. <laughs> Do you hear that? That doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Dispassionate, dispassionate benevolence. That's what we need. That's the way Christ was. Let's start in the Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready for every good work. Are we ready for every good work? Or are we just ready to complain? Well, so-and-so didn't do it. They didn't come here early enough to help us get started. So-and-so didn't hug me the right way. You know? So-and-so didn't smile at me. Come on, people. Really? We're supposed to be God's people. We have children sometimes that act better than adults. Excuse me, this is a tough message I just need a little water. I, I've been fretting over this thing because the Lord just, I, I don't even want to give this message. But I, I pray deeply when I'm supposed to be up here about what I'm supposed to pray about and what I'm supposed to preach about. And the Lord lays these things on people. We need to learn to love one another, brothers and sisters, and we're not going home. Amen. Amen. To speak evil of no man. 3 2. To speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and the love of our God, our Savior toward man, appeared. If I'm living by self, I'm going to have problems with my brothers and sisters. But if I'm living for Christ, Christ, if I'm in Jesus, then I'm more ready and willing to forgive than I am to judge. You ever notice how whenever you're in a hurry, there'll be God to put somebody right in front of you that's super slow. You know, that's just the way it is. I mean, all of us are not the same. Thank God we're not all the same. Some of us are turtles and some of us are cheetahs. You know? And when a cheetah gets, cheetah gets behind a turtle and he's got to wait, he don't like it. You know? We have to learn to love one another. The other room experience was a bunch of guys that were full of themselves and they wanted to be first, but they spent that 10 days together and they finally got it. Like Mary, Mary Magdalene. Look at this guy. Let's turn there real quick. Hold your finger on Titus, okay? Turn to John 8. Turn to John 8. John chapter 8. And, uh... Let's go to verse 4. Chapter 8, verse 4. When you're out there, just say it. 
All right, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Okay, here's some guys that are really holier than thou. Right? Because they just dragged this woman that was supposedly caught in the act, but you hear no mention of anybody else. Right? How did they know where she was at? Huh. Yeah. Okay. So these guys are all hypocrites to begin with. And it goes on and it says, Moses, you know, she's to be stoned. And in verse 6, they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse Jesus. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground and as though they, he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up and said unto them, Him who is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, being at the eldest even unto the last. Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw no one but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I con condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Jesus does not condemn her. Amen. We have to be very careful because, you know, we want to get our truth from the Bible, not from somebody's opinion, not from some pastor that says this is what it says without checking him out. We want to know truth. And God will give you the truth. If you, are, if you want to know truth, like you don't want anything, I mean, have you, ever, have you ever been short of breath? Have you ever been knocked down? Have you ever fallen out of a tree and you couldn't breathe? And some guy stands over you and says, you all right? <laughs> you can't breathe, right? What do you want more than anything else? That next breath. You know how bad you wanted that next breath? When you want truth as bad as you wanted that next breath, God will bless you with the truth. Amen. And he's given us the Holy Spirit to decipher the truth, to understand. This is what we have to have, brothers and sisters. But we can't have this casual contact relationship and read the Bible like it's a novel or something. we got to stay up late. we got to get up early. we got to put the magnifying glasses on. we got to figure out what some of these words mean. What did they mean when they said this? Why does it say that? We have to go line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. I, I work with people that they pull out one verse, one verse, they build a whole theology on it. And I say, okay, that verse is a good verse, but we have to understand it. Let's read it, you know, before and after, and all they can see is that one verse. And then you try to show them 20 other verses from the Bible and say, well, you've got to take everything in context. You've got to take the whole, well, no, why one verse throws away all your 20? <laughs> This is the understanding that a lot of people have. Listen, these shows that they have on TV, the History Channel, they're doing an AD, whatever it is, you know, um, going to show Christ and the whole Bible story. And this very story that we were just talking about, it has Jesus picking up a stone like he's going to throw it at Mary, but then he changes his mind. You see, subtle little sophistries that just change the story ever so much. And some people that never read the Bible, what vision of Jesus do they get when you skew that story just that little bit? You know, if I'm going to eat a piece of pie and 1% of it is arsenic and 99 is okay pie, what am I going to do? Am I going to eat the pie? No. Throw the pie away. Throw the pie away. I'm asking you people not to take anybody's word for anything. Check this stuff out for yourself. We are near the end of time. Jesus is going to have a people. He will have a people. You know, people are giving their hearts to the Lord like crazy overseas. And in America, everything is stagnant. It's just stagnant. Because we're fat and happy. That's what we are. We're fat and happy. I know it's... Not a pleasant thing to say, but that's what it is. It doesn't make any sense other than to say that we're happy here. We, we, have, to, we have to grow up if we're going to be the bride of Christ.
We can't be the flower girl forever. There comes a time when you have to grow up. Paul's working with these people through the Bible and he says, how long have I worked with you? You still want milk and you ought to be eating meat. Where are we at? Everybody in here ought to be doing Bible studies with people. We ought to be shaking the town of New Smyrna Beach up. Amen. We ought to be working this thing. We ought to be living this life and forgiving our brothers and sisters, not looking down our noses at them. And frankly, it's none of our business anyway. Let God take care of God's work. Now let's go back to Titus. In Titus, I'm just going to read verse 4 again, chapter 3 and verse 4. But after the kindness and love of God, our salvation toward man appeared. And then I have a heading before verse, before verse 5. And it says, Christians are sanctified by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Alright, now let's read verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, where pride would come in, right? Or, oh, look what I've done. Or, look what I don't do. Ain't I something? Right? Listen, I would, I, I'm of the mind until somebody proves me different that every sin that we commit, its root is in pride. Until somebody can show me different, I, that's where I stand. And I've studied and I've studied and I've tried to prove it wrong. I'm learning a whole new way to think. I really am. God is changing me. You know, it's like I used to think, why I need a new car? Or why I need this. But you know what I do now? I think the complete opposite way. Why don't I need You follow what I'm saying? Thought processes can be changed. We need, to, we need to take a new look. Have a new understanding. And we can't do that if we keep doing everything the same way we've done it. Right? We need to step back. Put on some brand new glasses. I need these. <laughs> It's terrible to get old. You can't see anymore. Anyways, hopefully you get wiser. But it's not so easy to get wiser. It's real easy to get older. But it's not so easy to get wiser. The Lord Jesus Christ is so, he wants to bless us so. You know, people got this understanding that, that God's, not, you know, he, he wants to do us in somehow. Are you kidding me? I fear God, brothers and sisters. I fear God greatly. Not the fact that he's going to destroy me. I fear God because I understand the power of God. And the fact that I, I don't want to do anything, anything, to cause him dis displeasure. I don't want to see anything but a smile on my father's face. I want to know that I know that I know that everything that I do, think and say and how I treat people is right and in line with him. We have no idea the majesty of what we're talking about here. We need to stop and take a brand new look. Isaiah thought he was all that. And he has a vision of heaven. And he goes into heaven. And he says, woe is me. Right? That's where we ought to be, brothers and sisters. That's right where we ought to be. Woe is me. Then Jesus can lift you up. Let him do the lift. He's strong. Trust me. He can handle it. I don't know anybody. The Bible says that he was tempted. Tempted beyond what we could think. Can you imagine the way he was tempted? You think you're tempted? You know, the, the beautiful thing about Jesus, he will never ask you to do anything that he hasn't done already for you. That he won't walk through the fire with you. He will carry the load. He's promised us that. Verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us. Is that past tense? Wow. Do you believe that's past tense? Hmm. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. 
which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. How much more could God give? What more could God do? Do you know anything? Anything. So how long will we stay here? How long will we put up with this world? Continue to be happy in this place. Dear Sister White had a vision of heaven. She was asked to come back and share what she saw. I don't think it I don't think she was ever the same. I don't think she was ever the same. She said this world is dark. Dark. At noontime, it's dark. We, we, we want to go to a brand new world, brothers and sisters. A brand new place. This place is old and passing away. And my God is so powerful that I can't even imagine what he can do. People try to put God in a box. Oh, he didn't do this and he didn't do that. Because they try to measure everything by the measuring stick that we have. Because we know the speed of light, the speed of sound, and all these things. And they can somehow think that God is, he's whittled down to these, these blockades. Let me say it in an easy way. He's the one that designed all this stuff. He's not bound by anything. You know, if we look back at the old Jewish economy, we find what? What do we find? We find a people that were supposed to do a work, right? Ancient Israel was supposed to do a work of what? Sharing Christ to the world, right? Preparing a people, right? They failed to do their work. They failed to do their work when when everything was hunky-dory, when all things were wonderful. The Israel of God today, the true church, is spiritual Israel. Right here, brothers and sisters. Right here. And you know, Israel of old had to do their work under privation and embarrassment. They were sent off to Babylon. Were they not sent off to Babylon? Where they had to do their work, right? So what is it? Is that what's got to happen to us? Is that what's got to happen to us? Do we have to be stripped of everything in this world to finally see what really matters? So that we'll have to finish the work under those circumstances. This is a sombering message. This is something you have to really think about. I, I really believe that old Israel, that every story in this Bible God has given us, He's given us for a reason. They're typologies. They show us. They show us of things to come. Old Israel is the typology of new Israel. Amen. Spiritual Israel. And we can look back at them and we can say all these things, but we're just like them. We're absolutely no different. No different. We understand a little bit more. Because we have the history to go back and read. But how are we any different? We're no different at all. They lost sight of Jesus. We lose sight of Jesus. Verse 6. Which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Verse 7. That being justified... By His grace. Are you justified by His grace? Justified, brothers and sisters. By His grace. We should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. Israel's history is a pathetic, a prophetic of the experiences of the church. That's exactly. It is kind of pathetic too. And we are pathetic. I know. <laughs> The work that was given to ancient Israel to do in prosperity was done by them in captivity under great trial and embarrassment. Jeremiah 51.6. Can, can we go there? Jeremiah 
I told my wife I wasn't going to do a bunch of scriptures today. She said, you just stay in the Bible. Because I always like to fill up with scripture. So I'm, I, I broke my promise just now. Sorry. 51.6. We all there? Flee out of the mists of Babylon and deliver every...